VCY America presents Crosstalk, a nationwide call-in program discussing issues that have an effect on our families, our communities, our churches, our nation, and our world. Crosstalk, an opportunity for you to voice your concerns for biblical principles. And now live by satellite and around the world on the Internet at vcyamerica.org. Here is today's Crosstalk. Hi there, welcome to Crosstalk. I'm Ingrid Schleter, and we are pleased you joined us today for the Crosstalk program. We have something important to talk about today, Um, and I am angry. The scripture says to be angry and sin not. There is a time for righteous anger, and I, um, along with a lot of other people that love the Lord and love his word, have uh, really grown concerned and outraged at the lies being perpetuated by spiritual leaders and authors and celebrity speakers all across the country who are breathing lies into the Christian congregation, trying to sow confusion, spiritual confusion, uh, not just trying to, but actually generating spiritual confusion. I want to start this this Crosstalk program with uh, Psalm 1. This was in my mind all the way here to the studios today. Uh, my little son and me were in the car and we were saying this out loud because there's a verse in here that is apropos of what we're talking about today. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Uh, Just briefly, look at at, uh, verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. We're going to talk about a spiritual leader, several actually today, who are asking us to meditate on anything but the Word of God. And we are seeing uh, literally the floodgates. We've been, you know, attempting to plug the dike, so to speak, spiritually for years. We've been saying, oh, there's mysticism and new spirituality, and we've been talking about the emerging church. There is a fresh boldness on the part of false teachers that we're going to confront today because we are going to come back at these false teachers equally bold. And uh, I am newly emboldened. As of this program, I really would, there's a lot of things I probably would have rather been doing today as, as would my guest, but we are going to do, be faithful today and uh, share with you our concerns and we're gonna, what you do with it is your business. But when these false teachers get up and breathe out lies and tell people that the f- encountering God is to, to, to listen to the enlightened ones of, of, of pagan religions. We're going to learn how to worship the God of the Bible, the one true God, by obeying the pagan enlightened ones. I say that's a lie, and we're going to talk about it with our guest today, Pastor Ken Silva of Apprising Ministries, who is on the phone with me. And Pastor Silva, thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. The Lord be praised. Good to be back. Well, I want to thank you personally for the research that you have done on this. Um, people don't realize this takes time. This is a full-time effort to dig up this information, to research these topics, and to put together sound bites and write articles to put them out there in the World Wide Web so people can find this stuff. Uh, there are not very many people doing it, and for those who are, I say thank the Lord, because it is a ministry in these last days, uh, a ministry of truth-telling, that many, many people, these spiritual leaders today, are not doing in the Christian church. Let's talk about, first of all, um, I want to play, should we start with the sound bites today? Sure. We're going to start with some sound bites. This is a supposedly Christian church, friends. This is Pastor Rob Bell uh, of Mars Hill Bible Church. Is at Grand Rapids, Michigan, right? That's correct. He is, uh, okay. This is what he's telling his church people. Uh, Rob Bell has been sucked into, or... Maybe people would say he simply represents the new mysticism, the new spirituality that has come into the evangelical church right into our midst. We are listening to the lies of the enemy. I want you to listen to some of the things that he has to say. It's very subtle sometimes. Sometimes it's brazen and flagrant what he is saying. But wear your discernment at what you're hearing. This is him speaking to his congregation in a sermon. Feel free to breathe as deep as you can without snoring. Central to the the, central to the Christian tradition for thousands of years have been disciplines of meditation reflection silence and breathing it was understood that to be a healthy person 
to be fully connected with God and fully centered. You would spend significant parts of your day in silence, breathing, meditating, praying, allowing the Spirit of God to transform you and touch you. He now he just had led his congregation in a breathing exercise where they breathe in and they breathe out and they breathe in and they breathe out. Uh, where in the world he just said something? He made a statement. Um, he proposed that uh, it was understood for thousands of years that to be a healthy person, fully connected with God, you needed to sit in silence and reflect and meditate. Uh, where in the world did he get that, Pastor Ken? He's getting that from the monastic systems of, of Rome because it has nothing to do with Scripture. It's nothing, it's nothing to do with the Bible. Okay, and the monastic system of Rome came from where? That originally comes from mystics that they call the uh, church, the uh, Desert Fathers. And the Desert Fathers got it from where? They would have gotten it from pagan religions like Buddhism and Hinduism. Okay. Because what they did, and, and I can quote you Thomas Merton on this, who's about the biggest Buddha they have of, you know, people that are into Christian uh, contemplative spirituality, Thomas Merton would be one of their heroes. It certainly is for Richard Foster. Merton tells us that spiritual direction and all this kind of stuff was not necessary until people moved away from the Christian communities into the desert. Okay, this is from a book called Spiritual Direction and, Myst and uh, Meditation by Tom Merton. So in other words, as these guys move away out into the desert, they have a lot of time on their hands. So they start these ascetic practices of sleeping in caves and being away from people and trying to beat their flesh down so they can meditate. And as they meditate, they get into these breathing exercises and come up with all kinds of what I would call crazy ideas, and now they're coming out of Rob Bell's mouth. They're coming out of Rob Bell's mouth and uh, right into the ears of thousands and thousands of people, not only at his church, but the many across the country who read his books and who all, from Zondervan Publishing and who also watch his NUMA videos, which have just absolutely uh, taken many evangelical college campuses, uh, youth groups, Bible studies by storm. These are extremely popular little videos where Rob Bell sits in sort of in this sort of cool postmodern hip way presents this concept of Eastern meditation under the, under the guise of Christianity. Let's listen to cut number two. Uh, this is really very interesting. In yoga, one of the central tenets of yoga is your breath needs to remain the same. Okay, okay, just I'm just going to stop it there for a second. What is Rob Bell doing talking about Hindu worship, which is what yoga is? That's Hindu prayer. What is he doing talking about yoga in a Christian congregation? Let's listen to this. In yoga, one of the central tenets of yoga is your breath needs to remain the same, regardless of the pose. So whether you're making the letter Q with your whatever, or you're just starting. In yoga, one of the things you learn right away is no matter how difficult the pose is, especially if you happen to have somebody from the Grand Rapids Ballet on the mat next to you, who can see their own back, uh, this way. Uh, it's not how flexible you are. It's not whether you can do the poses. It's not how much you can bend yourself. It's can you keep your breath consistent through whatever you're doing. And the yoga masters say this is how it is when you follow Jesus and surrender to God is it's your breath being consistent. It's your connection with God, regardless of the pose you find yourself in. That's integrating the divine into the daily. Okay, Rob Bell, um, let's go right to you, uh, Pastor Silva. What in the world is he doing talking about yoga? He obviously knows all about it because he told us what they teach you in yoga because of Rob Bell practices yoga. Sure. Well, he, he said in an interview uh, around the time that sermon came out, and that sermon's from 2005, and uh, it's stuff he's still doing, by the way, but we'll get to that later. But what he's doing is saying that he goes and he reads all these different books on Buddhism and yoga and blah, 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 and, and he, like, ingests them, he inhales them, and he learns how God's working in those religions. It's the people in the emerging church, they are into, like, finding God in the other. You'll recall when you talk to Doug Padgett, he probably brought up that phrase. Mm -hmm. And what they mean by that is they're going to go to other religions and see how God is working in other religions. Mm -hmm. So they already have a problem. But, you know, we have a bigger problem than even the Rob Bell, because Rob Bell is coming from the emerging church, and he's moving into evangelicalism. And you are, you are right, Ingrid. I get letters every day from people that are in evangelical 
what we would call conservative churches who are now, just now, finding Rob Bell DVDs in their youth ministry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's just being discovered by what I would call the conservative part of evangelicalism, if there is such a thing. 